62-year-old Norman Schlosser had been spending the 1994 4th of July weekend with four of his adult children and their families at a cabin in the Great Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. Like the others, Norman's son Steve was enjoying the last night of their stay, never really expecting anything could go wrong. I've been playing the banjo and listening to the bugs sing with my son James, who is blind. James, he heard a bee fly up. I'm scared, Daddy. And he said, Daddy, there's a bee out here. Where? Don't worry. So I tell him not to panic when bees come, just to be still and quiet so he can hear them and know where they're at. When I opened up the door, he flew right in. Rita was the youngest of Norman's six children. I told everyone to relax, and we were going to try and get the bee out. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Okay, girls, My dad walk. was He's sitting next to a lamp, and the hornet evidently was attracted by the light. It stung him on the back of the neck. Norman's oldest daughter, Kathy, rushed in to help. The sound of his screaming was just like someone was attacking him violently. I got the bee. My father's been stung before by different types of bees and has never had a uh, reaction. We had no first aid kit. So we applied an old-fashioned southern remedy, wet tobacco, on his sting. It's going to make you feel better. Tobacco, you? Okay. Take the sting out. I'll be right back. I'm I'm go. I figured he'd be all right, you know, within a half an hour or so after the hurt went away. I couldn't find it anywhere. Daddy started to feel sick. After about five minutes, he said he was feeling nauseous. I feel a lot better now. Yes. Right. Go! Oh, 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 oh. He hit the floor so hard that I knew when I saw him go down, this was a serious situation. There was no phone in the cabin. The only phone was at the lodge. Well, he was gasping for air and he couldn't breathe. His throat was closing up. Within a matter of seconds, he was suffocating. I knew I had to do something. I felt totally helpless, totally in shock, and I saw his body kind of go rigid and very unnatural looking. I've never been trained in CPR, but I pried his mouth open and started blowing into his lungs the best I could. Daddy, can you hear me? Please help, help. When Kathy reached the lodge, the desk clerk called 911 and asked cook Rhonda Bachman, who happened to be an EMT, if she could help. Might want to check it out. I just heard that someone had fainted. I just thought, well, I'll just go and monitor it until the ambulance gets there. Come on, Dad. I could see my dad's face, and it was changing colors rapidly. He turned about three different shades of gray. I started crying because I thought he was he was dying. Help is on the way. Oh, the ambulance oh, is coming, oh, Louise. Oh. At one point. I knew that we had lost Dad. More than 10 minutes had passed since Norman was stung. When I saw him, I thought he was dead. Okay, you're not getting here. I didn't know who she was. I just knew that she was there to help. And she was like an angel from heaven. I had noticed that his chest wasn't rising when his son was giving him ventilation. So I went ahead and repositioned his neck. I felt his neck for a pulse and I couldn't feel anything. So I started giving him CPR. It took every breath I had. It literally exhausted me. It was after one of my compressions that we heard him gasp for air. Fifteen minutes after Norman collapsed, a Swain County medic unit arrived on the scene, including EMT Lewis Crisp. Because of allergic reaction of the sting, we administered the epinephrine to the patient. 
He responded within seconds. But just because we had administered the drug, we still had a life-threatening situation. That was a terrible feeling, seeing my dad being loaded into an ambulance and, and not knowing if he was going to make it. Norman Slosser was taken to Swain County Hospital, where he was put under the care of emergency physician Marcus Williams. Mr. Slosser came into our emergency room with a blood pressure of 80 over nothing. He received adrenaline at the scene. However, this is a stopgap effort. Unless we give the additional antihistamines and steroids, the reaction can come back. I had no idea what shape he was in. And all I could do was just hope that he was going to be fine and come home with us where he belongs. And he did. So I'm very thankful. Norman Slosser has completely recovered from the incident that nearly took his life a month and a half earlier. Unless you go through a death experience like this, it's hard to express how much you think of those people and what they've done for me. Without the help of my family and Rhonda and the EMTs, I would not be here today. See you walk around, it's good. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And the fact that I was able to keep him going until the paramedics got there, that was a major rush for me. I appreciate it. Rhonda, I was really glad to really let her know from my heart how important she was to me and everybody else. Today, my dad carries a prescription bee kit with him when he's outdoors, and he can't be without that. When I think about what happened that night, it really stirs up my emotion because I was scared that he was gone, and I was just terribly frightened of all the things that I'd never told him, that I had wanted to tell him, like that I love him. But to have the second chance with my father is kind of like having a whole new friendship with him.